So this is the Destiny 2 Season of the Spicer. I will, I will cut my mic off. Uh, that way you guys can watch it. And then we'll go, and then I'll, I'll go um, a kind of like a frame by frame and talk about stuff. I did this with last season too, and I did it with Beyond Light and whatnot. So uh, uh, this will be like a re uh, occurrence like of me going through stuff when we get, when we get information and whatnot. So uh, I will shut up now and let you guys uh, listen to the, uh, the trailer. <gasps> what? morning, for the first time in humanity's long and storied history, the sun did not rise. It's a Vex simulation that has plunged the city into an endless night. Osiris and I could only think of one we might turn to. Mithrax, he claims to be among the last sacred splicers. Those with the power to commune with machines. Find him, Guardian, before the Vex do. Splice an entrance to the Vex network. I can guide you, but I cannot follow. Once inside, you must find your own way. There we have it, season of the splicer. So we'll start with uh, I'll turn I'll turn this down. Um, I watched Bife earlier, and he made a uh thing that maybe that like, like this right here, this 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 wording deep within the Vex network, like actually has more meaning than what people are thinking. Uh, and I'm inclined to agree with him on that because. We're used to seeing like actual Vex structures, which are more mechanical and whatnot, but we're actually going inside of the network this time around. So it's going to look a lot different than what we're used to of seeing a Vex, a Vex tech and whatnot. Like this is actually going to be more computer like, I guess, and whatnot. Uh, you can kind of see that like the more like blocky esque kind of computer-esque kind of stuff. Um, also like the... more more of the uh, Matrix-y kind of stuff going on here. Which, I'm a fan of like this whole aesthetic thing. Also, Ikora playing a bigger fucking role? About fucking time. We haven't seen her since Season of the Undying. The I'm very happy about that. Long and storied history, the sun did not rise. All the little Vex lines everywhere. Also, the sun being out, uh, that's a huge fucking problem. <laughs> uh, cause the earth does not have the sun. We kind of, things just die. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of issue to that if the, if the sun is not there. Just the earth kind of dies. Also, no you, Lestelle. Uh, kind of, kind of, we get more of the, uh, little, uh, computer kind of 
theme with Inside the Vex Network. Also, I'm kind of disappointed that they're reusing Atheon's model because this is uh, Atheon's model. Uh, I'll bring I'll bring that up a little bit later because I want I want to uh, I want to also show show you guys like the original trailer for Vault of Glass because um, this. This is literally Atheon's model, and I'm kind of disappointed that they're reusing it instead of keeping it exclusive to Atheon. Uh, but it's whatever, I guess. Um, there is one thing I'll excuse them for, like, if if this Vex stuff that we're doing. Uh, I'm feeling better than I was earlier, but I still have, like, a headache, and my stomach's kind of going, but <laughs> It's kind of just, it's... Um, what I'm thinking it is, is just heat exhaustion, because today was really fucking hot, and I was out of the house running errands, um, and I didn't have any water with me, so I think I got dehydrated and whatnot, and my stomach has just kind of, kind of gone to, bleh, after a while. Uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, yeah, um, the, depending on the sub-network of which Vex faction these are, um, which... Hezen's no Hezen Vengeance is gone. Uh Hezen's Collective, I think is what it is. Um uh if these Vex are a part of the Hezen, the Hezen Lords or whatnot, then I'll excuse this. If they are not the Hezen Lords, then this is kind of like, why did you reuse this model? Um because if they're the Hezen Lords, then that dra that dra uh, that that plays right into the story of Vault of Glass, because the Vault of Glass is uh run by the Hezen Lords and whatnot. The city into this is literally life. Atheon. Um, Cyrus and I could only think of one we might turn to. Mithrax. Our boy Mithrax is back. Also, fallen babies. <laughs> the community went fucking nuts about about seeing the uh, little fallen children because this is the first time that we've seen these. So this is the first time that we're actually seeing uh, like an actual fallen family of fallen kin and whatnot. We have not seen. Uh, Little fallen babies at all. This is our first time ever seeing that. To be among the last sacred splicers. The eh. Mithrax. He claims to be among the last sacred splicers. Almost. Fuck. The ah, damn it. I wish that. There we go. Okay. That's what I wanted. Um, they're talking about him being the one of the last splicers or whatnot. Splices are a faction of fallen that um that basically mess with technology and basically splice themselves with it. Uh, so we can see that here that he's kind of equipped this little fallen splicer thing to his arm. Uh, and this is what's going to help us like break into like the Vex network and whatnot. Also, uh, he's got his own little sigil now for the House of Light, so I'm very happy that we're actually getting, um, Mithrax back into the, uh, into the story. I'm very happy about that. Hi, you, Drake. But this is actually really cool, because basically the Splicers, um... Splicers are more or less, they align themselves like the Fallen that worship machines. It's so basically the Traveler. Bife, exp Bife explains this a lot better in his video. Um, I'm just going to kind of summarize or whatnot. But um, basically, basically, Mithrax is like the app, is the polar opposite of Aramis. Uh, because Aramis wants to break away, with, break away from machines instead of um, continuing to worship them like the Servitors and whatnot. Since, they are, uh, since the Servitors are built in the image of the Traveler. And they call the Traveler the Great Machine or whatnot, and Aramis wanted to break away from that. Uh, while Mithrax, being one of the last secret splicers, uh, wants to continue, wants to have faith in the Traveler still and whatnot. So this is, uh, he's the exact polar opposite of uh, of Aramis, and we can see that with his little splice thing here, Those with the power to where he opens a portal to the Vex network, basically. Or basically commune with machines, I guess you could say. This, this is really cool. Um, there's this skiff in the ground. This is new, but this is really cool because we still have Season of the Chosen stuff up here. We still have uh, Keitel's 
uh, Cabal Fleet just up here in the skybox, which is really neat that they're keeping that there. Um, which is because it, it kind of just it still shows that Keitel's still sticking around because I guess they've got nowhere else to go <laughs> since their home world is kind of dead. It's been destroyed by the by the hive. Um, so it's kind of cool that we we still have Keitel's Keitel's fleet up here and whatnot. So that'll be really cool to continue to see. Um, more of like the armor kind of scene, and there's a fallen ship right here, just wrecked there. This armor, I fucking love it. It is so much better than than Chosen's armor. Chosen's season of the Chosen's armor was so fucking garbage <laughs> that this armor basically looks so much better. I don't know how I feel about this Titan helmet. This Titan helmet is kind of eh to me, but the rest of this is is really fine. Like I like everything about this hunter, this warlock. I like too. It's just this Titan helmet that I'm kind of like eh. I don't know, but I like I like the rest of the Titan's outfit and whatnot. I really like this helmet for the warlock or not warlock. Uh, hunter. This hunter's helmet is really nice looking. Uh. Get a better shot on that. Fuck. Fuck. God damn it, I'm really bad at uh, scrubbing through this. Okay. Uh, we've got a new tube launcher right here. You can see them reloading it. Yeah, there we go. Have the new tube launcher there. Uh, so we're getting a brand new of that. Um. We have class swords again. There's a hunter. He has the, their their sword over here to where it, they hold it with one hand. I forget what the frame's called. I think it's lightweight frame. I I think I forget exactly what the frame is. Um, but hunters have that. Warlocks have this frame. Uh, and then there's a titan right here. Fuck. Titan has his little sword there. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a a better right there. Okay, so you can see the Titan's throne cleaver sword right here. So class swords are back. So this is nice to see that we get these back. Uh, we have a little the vex the six player activity. It's really nice that we're getting another six player activity to kind of like. Uh, replace Menagerie and Sundial since we haven't had a six-player activity besides raids since since those. So I'm very happy about that coming back. Override is what it's called, which is uh, also a really nice uh, touch to it. And I'll explain a little bit in this here in a second. Again, we got the Atheon. Um, but this is another thing that Bife explains in, in, in a, a good portion of his lore videos, like with the Vex or whatnot. Uh, but the Vex Radiolaria, basically the mind fluid or whatnot of the Vex, the the white gunk that comes that comes out of them when you uh, when you shoot critical shots on them. Um, whenever you kill a Vex, uh, and basically that gunk goes everywhere or whatnot. You're damaging the network of the Vex because those that radiolaria is their connection to the network and whatnot. So you killing that Vex, depending on what it is, you're ac you're actually damaging the sub network and whatnot. Um, so us disrupting and overriding, uh, us killing these giant uh, Atheon looking fuckers, um, we're actually like we're actually disrupting the network by killing these, which is which is actually really good. Uh, since that's what, what we're planning to do anyways, or that's what our uh, objective is, is to disrupt the network. Uh, this, uh, what this hunter just threw is the Glacier Nade, except not really. I'll, ex I'll, uh, I'll like, if I can pause it, right? Okay, right there. As you can see, it's made an entire AoE. So we're thinking that this is the new um, hunter aspect that it does this. It might also be a new grenade. So we might be getting a new stasis grenade, or at least that's my thought, is if it's not a hunter aspect, then we are getting a new stasis nade. 
um, which would be really cool to get a new stasis nade that's basically just a giant AoE. Um, but if this is the hunter, um, the new hunter aspect, that's kind of dull because it's just a bigger glacier wall. So that's kind of eh. Um, but we're thinking that this is the the new hunter aspect for stasis. We got armor synthesis here. This, uh... <laughs> I'm assuming this is the new Eververse armor of the season. Somebody made a meme of this earlier. Uh, the hunter here looks like Lando from Star Wars. Which is fucking hilarious to me. Uh... I, uh, I'm not a fan of it, to be honest, because that's really derpy looking. <laughs> I don't like wearing jeans in real life, so I'm not going to force my hunter to wear jeans. <laughs> also, why are these shoes golden? <laughs> uh, I will stick with, uh, I will stick with the armor that I got this season, or, uh, I will stick with the, the seasonal armor and whatnot, because, uh, <laughs> that is, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this, talk, this shows armor synthesis off to where changing armor. They changed into the uh, Garden of Salvation armor there. Um, that's Prestige Levy with some of the normal Levy gear on. Solstice 2018? I want to say that's the 2018 one. And then you see it goes from Garden of Salvation to Prestige Levy to... Uh, I think that's Sol I think that's also Solstice twenty twenty eighteen. That might be the twenty nineteen one, but I'm I think that's twenty eighteen. I could be wrong. Goes into Crown Armor. I think that's what that one is. And then I'm not sure what that last one is. Um, but you can see we're kind of we they mixed and matched armor here. Uh, the he's got the Garden of Salvation helmet, Levy Prestige Levy. And then the seasonal cloak, I think that's what that is. Uh, not entirely sure what these gauntlets are. This is Garden's helmet. Those boots, I don't know what are, I, I have no idea what this this armor is on the Titan. Um, changes into the Trials armor. No clue what this armor is. I've never seen this armor in my life. I, I actually, no, I might have seen it. I'm not entirely sure. That might be some of the new armor. I'm not sure. Uh, this I have no idea what the fucking. <laughs> I have no idea what that Titan armor is. Uh, this hunter is using. He's got the the gambit, the gambit prime uh, helmet there. Um, and then still with some of the garden sets because I or that's not garden. What is that? No, this is garden because it's got the Vex stuff on it. Time Lost Raid returns. The introduction of uh, Volt of Glass. Got a good, uh, the Spire. It's literally what the first encounter is for, for, uh, for Volt of Glass is building this Spire. Also, Volt of Glass is going to be free for everyone. So those of you who do not own the Season Pass or Beyond Light, uh, it is free for everyone. So that means you can jump into Destiny. Uh, just get your power up to 1300, and you'll be ready to enter into Vault of Glass. You'll be right there, ready to go. Because uh, that is, is free to everyone, which is really nice. Um, but yeah. There is... I can basically explain the first encounter, like, just from this picture. Because there's a plate over here, there's a plate up here, and then off screen there's another plate over here in a little cavern area. Uh, you need, you have to split your teams up into two, into, uh, into three teams of two. Two people stand on this plate, two people stand on this plate, two people over here on this plate. Basically, uh, two people, there'll be Vex coming from this area right here, and also there's a little cave thing that they come from. Uh, up here, there's this, there's another cave over here and another cave over here, and they'll pour into here. And then down here, there's a cave here, and they'll also spawn in behind you. And you basically have to sit on those plates until the spire builds up. Once this fire is done, it'll shoot this beam, and the gate will open. And we see that opening here, where it opens in there. Uh, we got the new Season Pass Exotic Sidearm. It's a, uh, kill a bunch of things, and then, uh, it does a little charge shot. 
and freezes. It's a stasis sidearm, which is our uh, our first stasis. Uh, well, not first stasis weapon. Salvation's grip was the first stasis weapon. This is our second stasis exotic. Um, I want to say first usable stasis exotic because Salvation's grip. I wouldn't call Salvation's grip a weapon. <laughs> More like an equipment is what I would call it, because it's used to build ice ice walls and that's it. You don't really use Salvation's Grip for anything else. We've got a weekly mission here. There's there's a sound cue, which uh I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it after it plays. That sh those shots, like, I'll, I'll play it again. That's the same sound as Outbreak, but that's a fusion rifle. Like, or at least I think that's a fusion rifle. It might be a, it might be a, another pulse. It look no, that's a fusion rifle. That's definitely a fucking fusion, because that's a fusion fusion cartridge there. Um, so with some of these weapons, there might be um something to do with Siva, because you don't ever hear outbreak out like outbreaks noise outside of other Siva weapons. Kind of, we didn't even really hear it with the Siva weapons back in Destiny One at, with Wrath of the Machine. It didn't really do anything with Siva though. Outbreak was the only Siva weapon. It's the only thing that shot Siva nanites. Um, but these weapons, they might shoot something, or they might have to do something with nanites, so they might be adding something in with Siva that makes weapons sound like nanites. Or there was another weapon in here that was somebody was shooting that was Outbreak. Uh, not entirely sure. Or Outbreak might be getting some kind of update as well, and they wanted to show off something about that, and they'll t talk more about it when uh, next week when this launches. Um, yep, yeah, this says, this is, I, I, I'm still thinking, I'm still pretty sure that this is a fusion, because this looks like a fusion because of this right here. Um, yeah, we get a, another look at the, the sidearm here. Also, if I back to show up. Another look at that helmet. I fucking love this helmet. Such a good helmet, such a step up from fucking Helmet of Suffering. Uh, from... Chosen. Warlock's got its little uh, seasonal armor here, and again with stasis sidearm there. Titan using the uh, one of the new uh, machine guns that will be coming out in the season. It's a void machine gun, I'm pretty sure, which is really good. Yeah, we get another look. Yeah, it's a void machine gun there. I think that's a finisher. If that's not a finisher, then I'm not sure what the fuck that is. Because, uh, it's definitely Arc Staff. But if that's not a finisher, because that's not what the current, that is not what the current Arc Staff finisher looks like. Um. But if we're getting a new, but there's some people who are thinking that maybe that that's not a finisher, but is but might be an update to one of the, to Arc Strider. Which, if that's a new move for Arc Strider... I'm all for it because Arkstrider really desperately needs some help because it it's it's really lacking in in a lot of areas. This metal tree just sucks ass. Uh, we see the warlock throw this, uh, and a lot of people. Uh, I'll back this up just a little bit. Right here, you can see that the. The Warlock threw this nade, and there's a Titan up here, because he's jumping towards it. Uh, but the Warlock threw this nade, I, I had to play this back because I was actually wondering um, about this when I when I saw this earlier and people were talking about this. So people thought that this was a Titan thing. People thought that this was going to be the new Titan aspect, was going to be this Javelin. But I think it's actually the new Warlock one. Because the Warlock is the one who threw the nade, so the Warlock is technically the person who killed them. Um, so I'm thinking this is the new Warlock thing, however, it, uh, so, the Warlock throws the nade, the nade causes, uh, when it kills something, it causes the Ice Javelin to spawn, I'm thinking any class can pick up that Ice Javelin and throw it, so I'm thinking the Warlock is getting, uh, an aspect that allows them to summon an Ice Javelin, but, 
you can see here that the Titan is the one wielding it, so that's why a lot of people thought it was the Titan aspect one. Uh, but yeah. She's gonna spice her. Um, but yeah. Uh, we'll go through some of the other stuff here. Let me grab... Let me grab... The... Let me grab the OG VOG trailer as well, real quick. So... SV1 Vaults of Glass Trailer. Ba -ba -ba. It's Rise of Iron. I don't want that. I want the original. I want the original Vault of Glass trailer. Where the fuck is it? Is this it? Really shitty quality. I mean, I understand that it's like... Woo! Ah, that's... Really bad quality. <laughs> oh, God. Holy shit, that's really bad fucking quality. Didn't somebody make a a remake of this? Pretty sure somebody made a, a remake of this trailer. Let me see if this is it. Is this the remade trailer? No, that is that's not the remade trailer. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Remade. Remake trailer. Uh, trailer remake fan recreation. I guess what I could do is I can I can show this trailer I can show the original trailer and I can show because the original trailer is horribly really bad quality like it's so bad uh Lots of glass trailer. This is really bad quality, like horribly bad quality. Move this over here. All right. This is the original trailer for uh for Vault of Glass. Like this is really bad quality. Uh, let's see right here. Should be fine. Like, this is really bad quality. But this is the original trailer for Vault. It's so bad quality. Like it's so, like this is this is what 240p. Yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> uh, all right, there's that. I'll show you the the fan the the fan remake one of it. The fan remake one is so much better. Bop. Bop. Props to whoever made this, by the way.
Literally props to whoever fucking made this because it's actually really good. It's a really good fan recreation of that trailer. Uh, but yeah, I will also I will now go through uh, this this little uh, the the page of Bungie that they have here on Season of the Splicer. Uh, so Destiny Two Season of the Splicer May eleventh, twenty twenty one through August twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. So right until basically the beginning of September, which five to eight. So yeah, it's about three months. Right? No, it's it's almost four months. Because that's beginning basically the beginning of May, and it goes basically to the end of August. So for counting May as the full month, so technically should count May as the full month. So yeah, that's about that's about four months of uh of stuff. Which eh, we'll see. We'll see if this is a uh, complete four months worth of stuff. There's probably going to definitely be some downtime in it. Uh, but let's see. Story, an endless night. The Vex have plunged the last city into an endless night, threatening the safety once found beneath the watchful presence of the Traveler. It is here, bathed in perpetual moonlight, that Ikora reveals the identity of an unlikely ally that may hold the keys to triumphing, triumphing, triumphing uh, over this attack. Here we have our, uh, our good boy Mithrax. Allies bound by light, Mithrax Kel of House Light leads a small group of Lixni who wish to be closer to the Traveler. As a sacred splicer, he possesses the knowledge needed to combat the Vex technology that ensnares the last city. Uh, there is a bond, bond of light shared here. Will it be enough? We have our, uh, our boy Mithrax, who uh, is definitely, definitely changed uh, in appearance since we last seen him in, uh, in Destiny. Because um, he definitely did not look like this back in uh, Season of the Dr uh, Was it Drifter? Yeah, it was Drifter, because it was, because Drifter is where Outbreak came in. Um, but yeah, this is definitely not how I looked in when uh, Outbreak came into the game. Uh, but yeah. Do, 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 do. Helm upgrade.exe, a new chamber overlooking the loading bay has been completed. It is here in the, here that the Vanguard will harness new splicer tech and plan the response to the Vex incursion. We have a, uh, a servitor plugged into a machine here, which is very interesting to see. So we can see that uh, the Umbral Ingram station here, all this space from Season of the Chosen is still here. We have this new space that's down these stairs over here, as you can see. These guardians are going down the stairs, so that's where we'll be going in the new season for uh, the helm. Way of the Splicer. Six player, six, uh, six player match main activity override. We can see a Overload champion. I fucking hate these guys, by the way. Overload Minotaur is the fucking worst. Uh, fire teams of six will use Splicer Tech to hack the Vex network, uncover their secrets, steal the code, and use their power against them. And then a weekly pinnacle mission, Expunge. Uh, each week, Guardians will uncover new vulnerabilities within the net Vex network and use Splicer keys to infiltrate and collapse them from the uh, collapse it from within. So uh, I'm hoping that maybe this has to do something with maybe an exotic, because I don't think this opens up right away. Could be wrong. Uh, we can see that there's apparently one on the moon, which is really cool here. We got the Vault of Glass, free for all players. The Vault of Glass, the time lost raid returns. Stored away deep within the Vault of Glass is Atheon, times conflict. No one, no one knows what this Vex is. Guardians must access the Vault, navigate the fractures in space and time, and terminate Atheon before it can become an unstoppable threat. Again, shows them loading into the uh, the Venus play space here, opening up the vault. Uh, Bungie rewards Tales of Daring Descent uh, into the fabled vault just seems a little grander when everyone's wearing matching rings, jackets, and sitting in front of the art. Uh, an art that immortalizes your fire team's triumphs. I don't think I ever looked at this. Does this just show... Yeah, this just shows my Bungie rewards. Then. So, here we see the Vault of Glass Ray Jacket. Pretty nice uh, Vex-themed jacket. Actually, I have the Garden of Salvation one. It's hanging up on my uh, my door right now. I wear it sometimes. I don't wear it often because it's really too hot in Florida to be wearing a jacket that, that's uh, as heavy as that, uh, as that one. But this one looks to be a little bit lighter than the, uh, uh, than the Garden of Salvation one. So maybe I'll actually be able to wear this one. Also, it has a hood. So... 
uh, it'll actually be good for uh, when it's raining. So I can actually wear it for when it's raining because the Garden of Salvation one does not have a hood. It is strictly just a jacket. <laughs> but uh, definitely has like the really cool Vex lines and uh, all the stuff that's Vault of Glass themish. We have the Raid Ring, which is really cool. I think this is the first uh, ring of a raid that we've actually gotten. We had we've got we had the one last year for um for Age of Triumph, which was really cool. That was just like the symbol of the raid or whatnot. But this is actually like a raid specific ring for Vault of Glass, which this is a first of its kind. So we've got Atheon's head here with the vault behind it. So this is really cool. I might pick this up if I have the money for it. And then of course here's our Vault of Glass uh, seal. I think it's called Fate Breaker, if I remember correctly. Do they say that anywhere? I'm pretty sure this is called Fate Breaker, if I remember correctly. Uh, I could be wrong on that, though. Uh, armor Synthesis. Uh, Great your collection among the stars and forge your, forge your look in, uh, in the last city. Every journey and every guardian is unique. Your armor should be tool. Uh, we got 8 of 1 returning. Uh, with the help of Ada One, Guardians will recover uh, Braytech secrets from Europa that allow, allow the building of a device known as the Loom. Once operational, Ada One will safeguard the Loom within the tower, granting Guardians the ability to create synth weaves. Uh, synth weaves unlock the power to, to turn almost any piece of armor into a universal ornament. Which, this is cool and all, uh, but there's definitely some issues with uh, with transmog <laughs> at, the, uh, at its current state. Um, but... We'll have to see when it comes out to see if it's actually any better or if they make it make any changes before transmog uh, when it comes out next week. So, uh, yeah. Armaments. I uh, believe people translate this and this is literally just seven, which is Bungie's favorite number. I think that that was what that was, the seven. Over 30 new new and reprised legendary weapons to crash the Vex network with. Find the perfect weapon in the perfect role and bring an end to this endless night. Here we can see, uh, I think this is a sidearm. If this isn't a sidearm, then that's a hand cannon. Uh, this is, this is that new grenade launcher. This is that new tube launcher, which it's a very interesting looking tube launcher. When I first looked at this, I did not think it was a tube launcher. Uh, this looks like an SMG, I think. This is a pulse. I think that this is an SMG. This is either an SMG or an auto. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but this is definitely a pulse because most pulse rifles in Destiny have been bullpups. I don't, I don't think there's any pulse rifle in the game currently that's not a bullpup. Uh, but this is definitely a pulse. Um, so I think this is, this is, yeah, that's definitely a sidearm. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a barrel or anything. So that's definitely a sidearm. So we got, we get a new sidearm, a new tube launcher. Um, I think this frame is an SMG in all honesty. Like, this looks like an SMG frame. This does not look like an auto rifle frame. They could blow me out of the water and say that, oh, that's a scout rifle. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Um, but that definitely looks more like an SMG than an auto. Because I think... I think the clip loads in right here. I think that's the clip right there. I could be wrong. Because the an auto rifle would normally load its clip, like, right in here. It wouldn't go into the into this so this i'm pretty sure is an smg because i think either this right here is its clip or this up here this might bump up and then that was where you put it not entirely sure we'll have to see we'll have to wait and see uh da, da, da. new hunter exotics called star eater scales allows hunters to feast upon orbs of light charging their super more quickly making it more potent uh these things look pretty cool i like how they look um, however, I don't think they'll make me take off Wormhusk, to be honest. Um, making our super more potent, I'd have to really see how that plays out in-game to really get a grasp on that. So I don't think these will make all too much of an impact on Hunters. These, the Titan ones, oh my god, this is going to make a huge impact. Uh, the Path of the Burning Steps, Titan armor that, cover, that converts solar eliminations into increased weapon damage and makes them more difficult to lock, more difficult to lock down with stasis. Basically, your your big toaster oven. You uh, you will not be, you will not be able to be frozen with stasis, um, with these on, which is really cool. Uh, and then we have the warlock ones here, boots of the assembler. 
condens condenses a warlock uh, rift healing or empowering uh, energy into projectiles, projectiles that seek out their allies to bless them with noble benefits. So basically, they are... Uh, fuck, what's the hand cannon called? Lumina. They are Lumina, uh, except armor. So I'm wondering... In all honesty, I'm wondering if you can pair it with Lumina. Because if you can pair it with Lumina, then that'd be really cool. Because you can get Blessing of the Sky, and then also uh, whatever the the blessing is of this. That'd be two things that you can bless your teammates with. So if you really want to go out all out support, you'd you'd slap on these with like uh, an empowering earth, because I think Lumina strictly heals. Could be wrong. I'd have to look at Lumina. But that'd be really cool to pull out support. We've got the, the seasonal armor here. Yeah, we got the seasonal armor here. You can see the Warlock, Hunter, and Titan. Again, I really like this Hunter armor. This Hunter armor looks fucking amazing. I love this aesthetic of Machine. Uh, season Pass gear, XP, and get, uh, get gear, XP rewards. Get the Season Pass and instantly unlock the new exotic Stasis sidearm. Also get XP boosts that speed up seasonal ranks. Uh, and rewards tra and reward track unlocks. So we can see here that the exotic stasis sidearm, as a token of friendship, uh, Mithrax bestows guardians with a uh, Cryosithia uh, 77k, a stasis powered sidearm with liquid cooling tech, a really cool sidearm, uh, Splicer Gauntlet, sacred Splicer tech that can be charged with ether and used to hack the Vex network, access Conflu uh, Conflux chest, and uh, unlock Splicer upgrades. This would be, I guess, like the hammer approving again. Uh, to where we basically power it up and then we're able to access like the Vex network and whatnot and gain uh and gain our rewards. Universal ornaments, unlock the new season of a splicer universal ornaments, and augment the look of any piece of armor in your collection. I wonder what the armor will look like without the ornaments, because I think this is all the ornaments on it. Uh but here we can see the uh uh the season pass. Can't really zoom in on anything or see what they are called or anything, which really sucks that I can't see that. But as you can see with uh, with one here, we have the uh, just the sidearm. It's not a box this time, which is interesting that we're not just getting armor right out the bout. Uh, we get the I think these are just the seasonal currency. Could be wrong. Uh, this looks like a transmat effect because it has the ship. Catalyst upgrade. I think this is the finisher. Yeah, it's finisher because the skull in the background. Uh, emblem, shader. Got the light machine gun that's right here. 35 is for the free players. New shader there. The I think that's the shotgun, I think. Sparrow there bunch of bright dust or bright ingrams bright dust um this looks this is probably rank up more xp rank up with mithrax and we have the universal ornaments here it's be interesting to see if uh what those what the base armor looks like of that if there is any base armor. If there's not base armor, that's interesting. New emote there. Helmet. And then, of course, another the exotic emote. And then, of course, the, uh, the sidearms uh, ornament. And then we've got the, uh, everything in the season pass and free players. So, seasonal reward track. All rewards for season pass owners. And then the free for everyone, free rewards. Free rewards on the season track are the top row. Bottom row is the free is the uh, is the if you own the season pass Se seasonal gear and armor. We get uh, the season pass owners get everything uh, free for all. They get selected gear and armor. Uh, seasonal challenges uh, free for all only get selected challenges. While season pass owners get everything. Seasonal artifact and mods everyone gets that. Solstice to Furious, everyone gets that. Armor Synthesis, everyone. Bolt of Lacerate, everyone. The six-player match main activity of Override. Uh, season Pass owners get uh, get access to the everything of it. Uh, while the free-for-all get a free trial. Basically, the free trial is you get to do the first one. Uh, and then then you have to, uh, if you want to continue on with like the storyline of Override, then you uh, 
then you have to buy the season pass, but you'll always be able to do the uh, the very first location, which I think is Europa, if I remember correctly. Uh, weekly Pinnacle mission, the Expunge, season pass only. Uh, instantly unlock the sidearm is the... Uh, uh, is for the season pass, so that's up here. If we go all the way back to uh, here, you basically log on, you grab that, boom, you have the new sidearm. Free trial activity available to everyone for one week after logging in. Interesting. Okay, so I guess for the very first week you get to try it out, and then you can't try it out anymore. Uh, and then here we have the calendar. So, May 11th, next week, when we log in, uh, we get intro mission uh, armor synthesis, the endless night begins, available free to all players. Uh, new stasis aspect requires destiny to be on light. Uh, I think we know the Hunter and the Warlock one. I'm not sure about the Titan. Uh, and then Override Europa requires season a Splicer. That's the new uh, Override thing that uh, the free-to-play players will get one week access to, and then it'll end for them. And then if they want to continue on with it, they'll have to uh, they'll have to buy the season pass, which I think is like ten dollars if I remember correctly. Uh, May 14th, Trials of Osiris begins again. So all those all the sweaty Trials players will be going into that. Maybe we might get new Trials weapons. I'm not sure. We'll have to see when we log in. Uh, May 18th, we have the first Iron Banner. And, of course, the override also goes to the moon. May 22nd, Bolt of Glass opens. Uh, again, make sure you are ready for that because we'll be starting stream on that day probably really early. And that might be another 24-hour stream, depending on how long it takes my team to get through that. Uh... Th three days afterwards, May 25th, we get the we uh, can't fucking speak weekly pinnacle mission uh, for override the Tangled Shore. Yeah, it might be another 24 hour stream, just like uh, Deepstone Crypt was because <laughs> Deepstone Crypt was actually I think Deepstone Crypt was about 23. It might have been 22 or 23 hours. I don't think it was a full 24 hours. Um, but yeah, so we'll probably be staying up pretty late for that one. So be ready. Um, but yeah, May 25th, get the weekly. We get another override for Tangled Shore. June 1st, uh, the weekly pinnacle mission for Expunged begins on that one. So we get to jump into that. June 8th, Iron Banner comes back around. The weekly pinnacle mission Expunged comes back in. Actually, Expunged may start here on May 25th. Because uh, it looks like it's two different things. So yeah. Um, June 15th, the Vault of Glass raid challenge is open. We get another uh, thing in Expunged. June 22nd, another thing in Expunged. June 29th, Iron Banner again, another thing in Expunged. July 6th, July 6th, Solstice of Heroes begin. Volta Class difficulty options also uh, become available. So that's Master Mode, I think, if I remember correctly. And then uh, August 3rd, we also get another, uh, we get another Iron Banner, and that's also when Solstice of Heroes ends. So uh, you get from, you get the whole month of July, and then it ends early August, and then August 10th, uh, we get the epilogue, and then nothing else is happening. That's really weird that the epilogue, uh, the epilogue happens on August 10th, but for the rest of the month, hang on, if we go down here, does this show up on my monitor? This should. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, let's see, so let's go down here to August. August 10th is a Tuesday. So we get the epilogue, and then we have two weeks of nothing, or we basically get that week and then reset on the 17th we have nothing unless there's something secret there might be some secret stuff afterwards uh that we don't see yet which is really interesting because i would have thought they would have done hmm i don't know how to feel about that that there's literally just a week of nothing until uh until the 24th probably that next week will probably be uh the week of the 17th of august will be like uh them revealing a bunch of stuff for season 15. Uh, but yeah, let's see. And then we just have a bunch of pictures here, so we get to see more of the Europa space, and where we see that catch, or the, the catch over here, that might be the skiff. Uh, another thing in the Vex network, this might be expunged because there's three people here. Another thing in Mithrax, holding his little splicer gauntlet. That space in the helm, where we see the servitor. I think this is a drag over here, could be wrong. Uh, but we see more of the armor. Holding the sidearm. Uh, the Atheon thing there. Or the Atheon model. The Vex thing in the network. 
Uh, the Tangled Shore one we see here for Override. Ada one in the Loom. And then another thing, this is the six player activity, I think. And then there's the FAQ.